Hello everyone and welcome to our class today. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Let's get started. Straight. Let's just get straight into it. Get your books. Page 149 and 148, 149. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to look at the picture. What do you observe in this picture? you had to guess, is it a modern picture? Why would you say it is not modern? What are some aspects of it that tell you this picture was not taken in the year 2000, the year 2010, or anything remotely close to the times that we live now? I'm sure that somebody must have pointed out that the picture is in black and white. That is one aspect of it that tells us this is not anything recent. Another aspect of the picture, if you look at what people are wearing, Here is a, a word that you may not be familiar with. I'm sure you know the word clothes, right? Attire. The type of attire they're wearing is not modern. It's from the good old days. It doesn't look like any type of attire that people would be wearing nowadays. The word attire means clothing. Another word that we can use here is garments. Garments, attire, clothing. All of that refers to what people are wearing. So if you look at what they're wearing, you can see that this picture wasn't taken any time close to our reality right now. Let's look at the people involved in the picture. There is an older man. If you had to guess what his occupation is, what would you say? I'm sure this word came up. Physician. Doctor. physician or doctor. What is the doctor doing at the moment in this picture? The doctor is examining a few patients. So you have the verb to examine, which means he's taking a very close look at them to see what's wrong with them to examine. So he's examining them right now. I'm going to write this down. He's examining patients. 
the doctor is examining patients. It looks like he has something in his hand. What do you call that object that you use and you, when you need some light to look at something close? Closely, when you want to closely look, you need to put some light somewhere. Those of you who said a flashlight, you are right. I'm going to give you two words for it. Flashlight and torch. I want you to think about these two words. Tell me if you think there is a difference, because they both mean the same thing, but there, there's something that's different. They mean the same thing, but there is one detail that's different. The word flashlight is more widely used in American English, and torch is more widely used in British English. In countries like New Zealand and Australia, for example, they say torch. They don't say flashlight. So he's trying to examine the boys. Back to the boys' attires now. Let's look at what the doctor is wearing. The doctor is wearing a lab coat. As I said earlier, the word attire refers to clothing, garments. So the doctor is wearing a lab coat. How about the boys? The boys are, well, I can't see the boy in the back very well. But if you look directly into the book, then you can see that they're all wearing suits. Something interesting about the word suit. In Norwegian, the word suit is dress, right? D-R-E-S-S. -S. But in English, it's called suit. Then you have a word in English, which is dress, which is spelled the same way as the word suit in Norwegian. But the word dress means something different. The word dress in our region, shule, shule, dress, dress, suit. It might seem like a funny detail or, oh, that's not so important, but it actually is. If you're writing, let us just say that you're writing a paper about the 17th of May in Norway and the traditions. Some people wear the typical Norwegian suit, the women wear dresses, and the men wear suits. But if you don't know it, you might get confused. Because the men will be wearing suits, and the word for suits in Norwegian is dress. And the word dress in English in our region is shule. Sounds like a small detail. Oh, yeah, I know that. But sometimes people get it wrong. So it's very important. So here you have everyone being examined by a doctor. And the text that we're going to read right now is called Typhoid Mary. This is the pronunciation in American English. This book brings a variety of texts which are read mostly in British English. So you will notice a different pronunciation from the standard pronunciation that I choose. Remember, whenever you have a listening activity, 
you have to look at the text as you listen. Don't space out. It's only 3 minutes and 37 seconds of your life. Look at the book as you listen. I'm going to play the audio for you. When a health inspector knocked on Mary Malone's door, she didn't know she was the cause of many typhoid outbreaks. She wasn't sick herself, but carried typhoid fever and spread the disease because of bad hygiene. Mary Malone was born in 1869 in Ireland. Like many other immigrants, she came to the USA searching for a better life. She was only 15 when she arrived in New York, where she started working as a cook for rich families. It is said that she was a large woman with quite a temper. In 1906, Mary worked for a banker and his family. Soon, one of the daughters, the wife, and two maids became ill with typhoid fever. Then followed the gardener and yet another daughter. At the time, it was known that typhoid fever spread through water or food. Investigators tried to find the source of the disease, but didn't have any success, until one of them thought of the family's cook. The investigators discovered that outbreaks of typhoid fever had followed Mary from job to job. Over a period of seven years, Mary had worked at many different houses. In all of them, people had become ill shortly after Mary came to work for the families. The investigators understood that this was more than just a coincidence, but they needed proof. Health officials came to get samples of blood, urine, and excrement from Mary, but she refused. In fact, she came after them with a carving fork. They had to chase her around the house and spent hours searching for her until they saw a piece of her dress sticking out from a closet. It took five policemen to bring her into hospital. One health official describes how they captured Mary. She came out fighting and sweating. I made another effort to talk to her and asked her again to let me have the specimens, but it was of no use. The policeman lifted her into the ambulance and sat on her all the way to the hospital. It was like being in a cage with an angry lion. Sure enough, they found typhoid bacteria in Mary's excrements. Mary became front page news and her crime was made to look more serious than it really was. After all, she didn't know she was spreading the disease. Mary was put on trial, found guilty, and sent to an isolated cottage on an island. A few years later, she was set free, as long as she promised never to work as a cook again. Unfortunately, Mary didn't keep her promise. Mary started working at a hospital using a different name. Soon there was a new outbreak of typhoid fever. 25 people became ill and two of them died. Mary was sent back to the isolated island where she had to spend the last years of her life. At the time, she was named the most dangerous woman in America. So now that we have listened to the story of Typhoid Mary, let's take a look at the questions on page 151. And I want you to try to answer them in, in the chat box. If you're not able to type fast enough, I don't know if you're typing like this, if you have your phone and you're doing this. Some people are quite fast with their thumbs. Or if you're typing on a keyboard, if you're typing on a keyboard and if you touch type, to touch type means that you type with all of your fingers and you don't need to look at the keyboard. You know where the letters are and you can just type. Those people will type faster. Some people type with two fingers, like that. 
So no matter where you are typing from, just type with short sentences so that we can answer them and I can check if you're writing, if you at least got the point from the story. First question on page 151. What kind of work did Mary Malone do? What kind of work did she do? The complete answer would be like with a subject, a verb, in other words would be she worked as a and then you would say what her occupation was. But because we're trying to get the answer into the chat box as fast as possible, if you just write the occupation, that's good enough. So let's see what people wrote. I'm going to put in the complete answer first. The complete answer would be, she worked as a cook. But if anybody just wrote cook, I would gladly accept that because you, maybe you're typing like this, maybe you're doing this, or maybe you're trying to find the letters. She worked as a cook, or she was a cook is also a complete answer for that. Letter B, exercise 4.33, page 151. Letter B, what happened to the people she worked for? I'm sure people are typing. So I'm going to type in the, the complete answer and I'll tell you what kind of short answer I would have accepted. The people she worked for got sick. That's the complete version. But if you just wrote they got sick, I would have accepted that too. Letter C. What happened to Mary in the end? I'm sure people are coming up with all sorts of different answers. One of the answers I would have accepted would be Mary was put in isolation. She was captured. She was arrested. She was forcibly taken to hospital. And did she want to go to the hospital herself? When they try what happened when they tried to capture her to take her to the hospital? What tried when they what? Bold, bold. Let's go back. What happened when they tried to take her to the hospital? She didn't really want to go. She was terrified. Before we go to 4.34, we have six more questions to answer. We're going to listen to another short passage it's even shorter than what you just listened to for you to get the answers to the next part of the story. Page 150, In Short. In Short. Mary Milan was born in 1869 in Ireland. She came to the USA as an immigrant when she was 15. She started working as a cook for rich families. In 1906, 
Mary worked for a banker and his family. Four members of the house became ill with typhoid fever. Nobody could find the source of the disease. Then the investigators thought of the family's cook. They discovered that for seven years, Mary had worked at many different houses. In all of them, people had become ill, but they needed proof. Health officials came to get samples of blood, urine, and excrement from Mary. She refused. It took five policemen to bring her into hospital. They found typhoid bacteria in Mary's excrements. She wasn't sick herself, but carried the disease. It was spread because of bad hygiene. Mary was put on trial, found guilty, and sent to an isolated cottage on an island. A few years later, she was set free as she promised never to work as a cook again. She didn't keep her promise. Mary started working at a hospital using a different name. Soon, there was a new outbreak of typhoid fever. 25 people became ill and two of them died. Mary was sent back to the island. She spent the last years of her life there. At the time, she was named the most dangerous woman in America. Let's move on and um, answer the questions. The questions on exercise 4.34. Same procedure, try to write them into the chat box in short answers. I'll write the complete answer. Later on, what you can do, these videos will be available both on YouTube and Facebook. If you want all the stuff that's written, you can just fast forward through them and write, write stuff down. It's always a good exercise to look at things and write down in pencil or pen. When you connect your brain to your hands and you write stuff down, you learn a lot more and you retain a lot more. First question, how old was Mary when she came to the USA? complete answer is she was 15 years old but of course if you just put in 15 I would have accepted that next which country did Mary come from which country did Mary come from? She came from Ireland. So here we have the subject, she, and then came, the main verb, and then other words, from Ireland. She came from Ireland. How many people became ill when Mary worked for the banker? Of course, you can just write four, four people. But the complete answer is four people became ill. Four people, that's the subject. It's a compound, compound subject. It has two elements in it. Four people became ill. Letter D. What kind of samples did the investigators want from, Ma from Mary? The 
And I'm sure you've seen the answer in there in the text, excrements. Excrements is just another word for feces or poop. But instead of using that word, it's a more official word for it. And then they examined the sample to see if there was bacteria in it. Next question. How many policemen did it take to get Mary to the hospital? Remember, she didn't want to go to the hospital. She was really adamant that she didn't want to go. How many policemen? It took five policemen. Pay attention to this to the spelling there. It took five policemen to take her to the hospital. I hope you can see this because I'm not making it too big so it can fit the screen. But here it's policemen with an E. Policemen, not policeman. Eh. Not with an A, but with an E because it's plural. Next question. Where was Mary working when there was a new outbreak of typhoid fever? Because first she was arrested, she was put in isolation, and then when she came out, she promised she would never work again and should be blah blah. But then she actually went and got a job again. Right? She didn't keep her promise. And she was working at a hospital. She was working at a hospital. Four point thirty five you will do on your own. You don't need to hand this in. You don't need to send this to me, but uh, you need to do it on your own in writing. Try to write complete sentences, just like I did with the first two exercises. The next thing that we'll do today, we're going to work with verbs, always very important. So take a look at this Quizlet study set, Selbo High School English VG1 Verbs. I'm going to post the link for you inside the chat box so you have access to it. But what we're going to do with it right now, we're going over some sentences to practice. One of the things that happens quite often which is something I really want to work on with all of my students who are native speakers of Norwegian, native speakers of Swedish or German or other languages that don't have the same verb tenses and sometimes they get confused. So we're going to work on these. First we're going over all the sentences together and after that we'll do a Quizlet Live to practice. And when I first introduced this to you I told you that we would never completely abandon it. That we would always repeat. Repeat and study this because it takes practice for people to get it right. So here's the first 
the first one. I have spoken to him. And then I'll read your version of it. Yeah, har snakket med hon. The next one. He has been speaking a lot lately. He has been speaking a lot lately. So there is a difference between he has spoken and he has been speaking. What is the difference? He has spoken. He has already done that. But when I say he has been speaking, he started speaking somewhere in the past, sometime in the past. He continued to speak and he's still speaking now. He has been speaking. And in our region, both sentences, he has spoken and he has been speaking, translate into hanhar snakket. So the difference for you to have some frame of reference of what the difference is, think of lately, i det siste. Han har snakket mye i det siste. He has spoken a lot. Han har snakket mye. I have been there. This one is quite easy for most people who speak Norwegian as their first language because all the elements match. Jeg har vært der. I was there. This one is a slam dunk too. Jeg var der. I went there. So you have the verb to go, not to be confused with the verb in Norwegian or go, because or go to walk. To go is more of odra, because you don't necessarily, when you go somewhere, you're not necessarily going on foot. I have gone there before. Yeah, I have gone, I had dropped. He has gone home. Han had dropped. Yem. He went home. Han drew yem. So here we have 33 examples of sentences. She has studied a lot. She studied a lot. And the examples are similar but not exactly the same. Similar, but not the same. So you have to examine all of them to see what the difference is in order to use them correctly. So what's the difference between she has studied a lot and she studied a lot? Hun studerte mye i går. She has studied a lot. Hun har studert mye i livet sitt. So there is a frame of reference in the past, but not exactly a time when it happened. When you say, ja har studert. When you say that, it means that you have studied a lot at some point in your life, but you're not giving me or anyone that you're speaking to or with, you're not giving them the exact time frame when that happened. You're not telling them, was it yesterday? Was it two years ago? You're just telling them in a vague manner that you have studied. But when? She studied a lot last year. So now, when you use this verb tense, simple past, hun studerte mye i fjord. So when you give people a time frame, exactly when it happened, that's when you use this verb form. So I want you to practice using all of these sentences. My advice, as always, 
is take the test, the Quizlet test, and take it until you reach 100%. Take it a few times. What happens is when you when you go back and you go into test again, it will give you a different set of examples. So you'll be able to really, really practice. So this is my piece of advice to you. Use the test. Do it as many times as you possibly can until you reach 100%. Then just for fun, most people love doing this one on their phone, match. Because when you do the match on your phone, you can do it quite fast. So you do this just for fun. I'm not even going to, I'm going to do it very slowly because I don't, I want your scores to be competitive scores, not mine. But when you do it on your computer, it takes a little while. But when you do it on your phone, you normally get better scores. So here, my name is the only one on the leaderboard right now. But of course, after you have played, I'm sure Christina K is going to get the first. She's really fast. She's the champion in this class, Christina K. So um, maybe you can make your goal. Oh, I want to beat Christina K at this. I want to do it faster than she does. I think her record was, what, 8 point something seconds? She's really good at this. But what we're going to do now, we're going to do a Quizlet live with these verbs. But after we finish here, I want you to do the exercise that's left on page 151. Page 151, exercise 4.35, you will receive, or maybe you have already received, an email with all the exercises you have to do. 4.35, page 151. And you will practice this study set here, Selbo High School English VG1 Verbs. I usually have my students in a Spanish class also practice this because many times in the Spanish class I use examples from English to compare because sometimes you don't have the same type of verb forms in English that you have in Norwegian but you have in English and Spanish some of the same verb forms and it helps the more languages you know the easier it gets for you to compare the languages and so it's a very very important study set for you so now I am going to put in here we go how would you like to play I think they changed the, the Quizlet now it has teams or individuals you're trying to be a little bit more like Kahoot I guess So the code is probably already in there. This is not the code though, because by the time we do this, by the time we do this, I'll generate a different code. It's not going to be this code. So do not put in the code that you just saw. Put in the code that I typed into the chat box. Uh, 
I'm just giving it some time so that everyone gets the code. I'm also going to send the code to that group on Facebook that everybody is in. So if you haven't seen the code in the chat box, you will be in your Facebook. And if all fails, I know that you communicate with each other on Snapchat, FaceTime. I've, I'm sure everybody will be there in a minute. So remember to do the match exercises. Remember to log in to Quizlet so I know who has been practicing. And remember to do the exercise, the last exercise, on page 151. Now let's go play Quizlet.